kind of basically tactical death to refill a bottle or to go, you know, the, uh, undying stuff, right? It's not yeah. too complex. He 1v2s you in lane, and he'll, he'll be very happy to do it under, uh, behind a tower as well. Not that I think a Shaker can pull that easily versus Undyne, especially with, like, Solo Rip and Decay to play with. I mean, it's it's tough. This guy's such a beast in the lane still. Yeah. No, no, if, if it shakes out that way, like, definitely Kotaro will have complete free farm. Uh, so we'll Talk see. Talk to me about this Visage pick, though. Likely to still be the off laner for Tempest, I'd imagine. Uh, still don't have the matchup for it. I don't see them banning out the Monkey King, which has been, at least last patch, the big go-to uh, against the Visage for the safe lane matchup. Um, but where do, where do you see the strengths of this hero right now, especially for Tempest, considering how bad their game one was in the off lane? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing this. Uh, who was their off laner? What Draken, right? Uh, their off laner is Draken. Yeah, yes, yeah. correct. So I mean, like obviously, Visage buys Wraith Pact, and uh, I'm I'm assuming that he's played a bunch of Visage, so he knows what he likes to do. Uh, and then it's it's just a strong hero. Like it, if you draft around it, right? So like you first do it like this. Like if I, I'm just looking at Visage plus I'm dying, and I feel really good. It just feels good. Like, okay, we need a stun, we need some catch, but otherwise, like, we we basically have everything. Like, we can kill Roche, we have good team fight, mm -hmm. and push buildings, like, we can do whatever we want, man. Checks a lot of boxes, right, yeah, basically. Exactly. Yeah, the biggest difference, you know, if the last time you really tuned into Dota was at Arlington, where Visage was still pretty popularly played, or even during the qualifiers, you did get a pretty serious nerf, I think, most recently, uh, where the the range, uh, the aura, uh, or AoE, on, uh, what is it called, Gravekeeper's Cloak, yep. was reduced heavily, I think by 300 or something. Uh, and where that is really going to be seen played out is when Visage would do those split, not even split push, but basically solo push shenanigans, where... <laughs> You know, where some teams would have a lot of problems pushing high ground into Earthshaker Mars, for example, like in this game, Visage would just throw forward his familiars uh, and he would stand in aura. You couldn't kill the birds. The birds would like nuke your tower, especially if he had AC. Yeah. A lot harder to do that now. You're going to have to stand AC much drums, closer. And it just oh, yeah. Dies. Yeah. So it's uh, going to be much more difficult to split push as easily, uh, not even split push, just straight up push and siege as a Visage with that change. But he's still very strong in lane, uh, and he's still basically, um, you know, can be a bit of a pharmacy machine. There's awful, they, they also, pardon, uh, nerfed Grave Chill a lot and stuff like that. But still, strong hero in the offlane, all the same. I want to see her. Okay, they go Io. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit curious what they will. Will they go with the Gyrocopter too? Oh, wow. I wasn't even looking in that direction. I saw Fear tweet earlier today uh, that he is not a fan of Gyro Carry <laughs> in the current month. And, you know, I'll show my age here. I told you yesterday, but, you know, I, I watched that guy win a TI on the Gyro. Uh, so uh, I, I trust his insight, at least on that hero for now. Uh, we, did, we did see earlier today, I'm pretty sure T1 played the Gyro 2 games. And unfortunately, uh -huh. lost both games. Ah. Uh, let's see here. Because, I mean, that, that would be my idea. Let's see. Okay, Ember, let's see what uh, Vichy do here. I really like Luna and Tamars, by the way. Uh, obviously, the lane is super good, but one of the more annoying aspects about Mars in his mid game, even after you get BKB, is as a ranged hero, you know, you've got to make a decision whether to BKB early in the fight to get around Arena and allow your projectiles to do things or to just wait it out and, you know, kind of roll the dice as far as how the fight's going to play out. Uh, Luna kind of gives you, she still kind of does have that problem to be certain, but. Her glaives, when they bounce, so as long as they hit their target and are not blocked by the arena walls, will bounce through. They're, they're unobstructed by oh, arena okay. walls. So right. it's pretty good in that regard compared to a lot of other ranged heroes like Gyro, right, who doesn't get anything with Flak Cannon. Yeah. No, they also have another kind of cool mechanic here. Is the, the Luna Aura works on the birds, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, I'm, fe I'm feeling really good for it. Like, Tempest lineup is beautiful right now. It looks really nice. Uh, Talk to me about it. Is, is it. is it like just in general, like in isolation, you look at the, uh, you know, the Radiant side of the draft, you like all their four heroes, uh, or is it even more than that? You like what they're picking here in Tovici? Uh, I mean, not specific. Like what I like, the Undying versus that, if that's the lane, right? Which mm -hmm. pretend. Maybe it's more style, but even then, I think it's fine. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Like that feels just like a Luna will have a really good game. But it's then like you're just imagining what Visage will be level 12, Luna, whatever, level 14, 15. And they have their first items, and they go together. Uh, like if you, I, I don't really see how Vichy fight into that. Mm -hmm. Like when they don't have a lot of farm on Slark, and if you don't fight into that, they do whatever they want. Like oh, absolutely. Luna aura on those Ten birds, seconds, like they will maybe. kill your entire base in a minute. Uh, so you don't have that time, you know, to just be Five cheesy out on the map, like cutting exactly. waves. Like they will just run you through. 
Exactly. And, like I mean, every, every everything is just nice. It just looks nice. Like they chase you, then they, like you have the catch with the Ember Spirit. Of course, uh, Undying Tombstone, actually one of the bigger nerfs I think to it, um, uh, or the one that always catches my eye, is the Vision Radius was reduced significantly. Um, that's still it's still really good. Don't get me wrong, it's still pretty busted as well if you put it on a cliff uh, for what it gives you. Um, but it's going to be a little harder now to spot something like a Shaker and scare him away if he's trying to counter into shape with a slam. That's still maybe one of my only concerns here. Ember can still suss him out and look to flush him because usually you these guys, especially when the map hasn't changed that much, they know where you know these supports like your Wyverns, your Shakers, your Oracles, they know where they hide, right? So you send the Remnant back there and you'll send sh Shaker scattering. Um, but you know they, they don't have at least the best non-committal reach. I also really like Tombstone into Slark in general because you know Slark he can. Definitely Definitely hit Tombstone being an Agi carry, but you don't get Essence stacks. Ah, uh, you don't. You don't want to hit. You don't yeah. want to hit the Tombstone. Uh, so it doesn't feel great for you. But who else? No one else hits Tombstone on Vici either. So like, oof, it's rough. Yeah, I mean you have the eye. Yeah, I mean I guess you can just hit it. You have the IO buff there. You hit really fast. It's true. Uh, it, let's see. Like maybe the let's see the buff. Tiny. Tiny. Okay, fine. Just a tiny Visage lane. But here I'm wondering Vici's last pick. If they will go for something like a Necrophos, you know, like something to just shut down this Ember. And because uh, they banned the Leshrac themselves, which I thought maybe they would pick up. Hmm. Um, so like I'm, I'm, I feel like they should pick something that really pressures Amber in lane. Five seconds remaining. So otherwise, uh, Tempest lineup is just I don't know. It's just beautiful. Yeah. No, you're, you're looking at mid lane. I'm looking at the implications of this bottom lane as well. Um, I'm wondering where they actually want to end up laning the support, but I'll speak more on that for now, or in a little bit, right? Because obviously with the tiny toss back, that, that has implications with who you send bottom with the Slark, um, especially into a kill lane like a Visage. That, that's pretty scary. Uh, but with for Vici, oh, what will it be? I think they do need a little bit, yeah, just okay. damage. Is that a carry SF though? May, uh, will they run this mid Slark? No. no, 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 it should be mid shot of the end should no, be really no. strong versus Ember Spirit. Like, that's a matchup that can go, you can be level, like, you can end up being level four Ember Spirit versus level six or seven shot of the end, like, if, uh, if things go badly. But, okay, so they're going to throw Yang on the Wisp then. So it looks like it's, is, I mean, maybe they'll, they'll switch up the lanes a little bit and not send Shaker Mars into an Undyne. Um, and I don't know, that's a little bit easier, at, at least than Slavin, who's playing the Tiny, doesn't have free tossbacks onto a melee, uh, you know, position five Shaker, who is not going to get any farm, and then is also going to be really an easy kill for a, a Tiny, but I don't know. I, I still think this Undying is going to be huge problems. Kotaro is on a hero this time, who has another built-in farm mechanic, uh, so he is going to be guaranteed to get a pretty decent start. Is that going to be good enough to maybe hold back this Slark in the early game when he's buffed by a Wisp, though? No, I think so. I think the, I mean, the Slark is most likely going to farm for quite a bit, and you're going to be linking up with this Shadowfian with Io. Uh, but yeah, I'm feeling, like, really hopeful for Tempest here. Like, if there's a game where they can pull something off, it, it should be this one. Uh, yeah. the, the only thing I'm worrying about is, like, this Shadowfian versus Ember. Like, it can get really ugly. Yeah, and Ember, of course, mid laners in general with less avenues to to really recover a lane that's gone lopsided. Uh, again, no more no more small camps, which I, I bring it up a lot, but it is really a big change. I think it's breathed a lot of life back into these heroes that like to dominate lanes, like SF. You know, the classic one v one hero uh, that we saw actually at uh, for the Malaysia ESL one Malaysia uh, tiebreakers, right? The Shadowfiend mid lane matchup. But oh, yeah. uh, you know, he's not he's not as punishing, but. This guy, you know, he can really close you out of a game uh, if, if he gets a big lead, especially on one of these more squishy heroes like the Spirits, who, you know, who can be a bit weaker uh, now with the fear, especially on Requiem. That being said, Shadowfiend also can kind of suffer from the same problem. Do, could you foresee maybe something like a Tiny rotating away from uh, his lane and, and maybe trying to go for a cheeky kill onto SF? Is that yeah, going to be I mean, like that, that's the only way I see Shadowfiend okay. not completely destroying the mid lane. Uh, but that also depends. If they, if they can get the lane back with Visage. Because you yep. don't want to leave, like, you don't want to sacrifice your visage. Right? No, so, of course not. You, you rather just have a, let the Shadow Fiend get what he wants. Like, Amber will be behind, but, like, it's fine. Your lineup is still good. Caught you and Draken are throwing down the gauntlet at each other. Uh, yeah. That's always pretty animal. nice. I think, uh, yeah, the, the beautiful Couriers. Uh, what was I going to go on about, though? Thing with this tiny rotating over towards the mid lane. Oh, right. I, I think the reason why maybe XM even was quite eager to get his hands on the SF again, still this kind of 
I'm going to dominate you and kick you out of the game kind of hero is because of how well he did in the, in the laning stage last time. Like, we, we brought it up casually at the start of the draft analysis, and I think we'll be looking to keep a close eye on it here now in our second game. But that was fairly one-sided for what is, you know, not that one-sided of a matchup between the two. Yeah. Other lanes to look at, of course, are going to be this Undyne. I think Katyu very excited to be playing the Undyne into what is going to be the Mars Shaker lane. Yeah, only one Fisher block here, so I don't even know. The lane will still be really far back. I want to see how they... The Undying didn't buy any region, though, so... That's a little strange mm -hmm. to me. He only has Mangos coming out, too. Okay. Oh, he intends to probably hit him with plenty of decays, then, is looking like to be the, the plan for now. Uh, but yeah, nice job there by Kotaro, uh, where he, the reason why the wave's so far back, even with one Fissure block, is because he obviously knew that the Shaker was going to block the wave, right? So he was blocking the creeps basically from, I think, the tier, between the tier 1 and tier 2, and he's got a pretty good position now on the wave, he can sit very comfortably here and let Kayu do his thing. As you can see, Kotaro really not paying him any mind. Lane is, I want to say, yeah, of course, it's Shadow Raises first. Couple of mangoes as well. Nuke a couple of waves. Force Ember Spirit to try and see us under tower. Force him to start tanking a lot of these Shadow Raise stacks, which are very annoying to deal with now that they apply a move speed slow and a turn rate slow. I mean, so far, he's doing as well as he can. He's going to have his bottle coming. Yep, there it goes. That's very strong here. The lanes are eventually going to settle back into a more or less normal equilibrium, but next time... <laughs> Okay, decent job there by Seba, so at least secure his CS. But again, every time he goes in like that, he's going to be eating uh, a Shadow Raise or two if there's enough mana for XM to provide it. Bottom, decent Fissure there. He's going to get Frisk out of what could have been a sticky situation. Still only two Tangos now for Katyu. Like, we're uh, keeping our eye on that as far as how much harass he can actually keep up in the lane. Botado has doubled up the range creeps, though, so this lane is going to eventually push in for Vici Gaming. That allows Frisk to be a little bit more casual. He doesn't really need to risk, you know, dying, basically, to Katyu, because uh, they know that they're eventually going to get some creeps underneath tower here. Yep, yep. A comfortable start there for Kotaro, leading 13 and 3. Top lane, Erika feeling pretty comfortable here. Draken did go for a level 1 soul assumption. You can see there's the nuke damage doing some good work there onto Yang. He's going to have another one shortly, but doesn't have the mana for it. Mm, Would have had it there with Owen. Oh. Oh, is going to have it? No. Yes. Just shy. I was about to right. say, he can eat the mango, but uh, I don't think he had enough cell phone reception there for the kill. No, for sure not. 3G, uh, 3G coverage. Yeah, he had. Uh, he had what is it? What do you get when you're out of uh, out of coverage? You get the H or something like that. The dreaded H for uh, H plus or whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm proud of the Ember. He's doing his best right there. This is definitely good enough. Like the things can be way worse at this point. Like if you put me versus one of these top 50 players, uh, it it. Uh, it can get really, it, it's not nice. What, what, it wouldn't look so pretty, is, is what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, Sevas is doing a good job there. That was a, an aggressive fortify, but it was probably here for the mid lane. Oh, that's just Ooh. not enough damage there on the fourth stack of Shadow Rays. So Sevas is going to bottle sip up. You can see he is absolutely just slowed to a crawl here. It does impact uh, the, the Ember a bit more than some oh, other players. Oh, but they do get first blood. Nice yeah. fissure there to secure it. Yeah, no, I'm a little... Uh, they should do better in this lane. It's still fine enough though. Like I still really love Tempest lineup, but like the second I see him showing up to lane with boots and no regen, I guess I think he's misreading how he's supposed to be playing this. What what's the alternative for him there? Like how how can you see this going differently if he has different items? As at least he's able to refill the bottle of Sebas mid. No, it's just he he should have a, just at least one pack of tangos so you constantly can be regening, and then you have. You do the stupid build, the brainless build. You just have six mangoes, <laughs> and then you can just like you, you can just chase them around. Like what happened now? He goes into decay, and then they use their spells on him, and he can't play aggressive anymore. And now Kotaro is even forced to bear a bit of the brunt here in this lane. No, but I mean, the lane will still be like Kotaro will still be farmed. Like they, it's not GG or anything, but no, yeah. it just could be better. And this top lane as well for Tempest. We should bring up. 
is much better than it was before, but it's still only 10 CS right now for Draken. Um, at least they're they're kind of keeping Vici a bit on their toes. I think Erica, you know, he's uh, got to be a bit more careful with his position, whereas the last time it was basically the most free Morphling lane he's ever been in. Yeah. Uh, this one's a little bit more difficult, potentially, but uh, still Erica, pretty nice here. 28 now and 10. Yeah. Keeping just about even there with XM in the mid lane, who's doing the same. Yeah, no, th uh, this lane is not going to get better for Tempest either. Like, it's level 1 and maybe even level 2. Where... I'm okay. They do? No. Uh, just trying to harass back the Wisp, but it, it's like all their damage comes in bursts, and Wisp with plenty of healing over time as well with the headdress is going to do a good job to, to heal a lot of that off. It's still good damage. It'll force Erica off of the wave for a little bit while he does heal up. As bottom, there's a tombstone dropped, but Fiji Game ain't able to simply just walk away. Big wave there secured, at least for Kotaro, as there's yep. a toss back onto the Slark. Little tower shot for him. Slot in though. Careful. They're going to focus now onto the Slark, but the overcharge from Yang is going to keep Erica alive and healthy. Erica maybe looking for his first permanent stack of Agi. Will not get it there as it's Yang with the ranged auto attack to secure the kill. But we can already see this lane, like you're saying, not getting much better for Tempest right now. But yeah. as you said before, it's way better than last game. Like, yes. even though you don't have that many CS on Visage, like, you're not feeling amazing. You're still getting these levels. The lane is in a nice position. Uh, so you don't have to cry here. You're going to get nope. your six. So far, so good. Slot in with another bottle refill in the mid lane. Might have gone for, uh, I believe as Cap calls it, an Insano mode play where you just run at <laughs> yeah. the enemy and have a toss them and oh, no matter yeah. what. Um, it always, you know, a pretty viable option versus an SF, especially now that you've got three points in Slight of Fist, right? So uh, some damage here uh, for Emerspear, but, but they've at least escorted him safely to level six. Uh, two bottle refills, courtesy of uh, support deaths here, are going to come in handy there for him uh, to make sure that he's doing quite an admirable job, isn't he, this Ember? He's kept no, this up is good, decent. this is good. Like, I'm just comparing it. Like, last game, it's Puck versus Void Spirit, right? And it was basically the same goal difference. And this matchup is... Not good for Ember. So, uh, yeah. Now this is uh, over over my expectation for the mid lane. Now nah, though, careful. Slavin would have caught a glimpse here of Frisk rotating on over with the two lane wards that they have in the river. There's two supports mid though for Tempest. So Slavin is going to be able to reposition. Oh, insane mode. I think, yeah, he's going to go for an insane mode, but I think he got scouted by that ward that Vici Gaming yeah. have on the enemy side of the river. Still maybe oh, looking no. for the play, but no. The Fissure, yep, that's going to condemn him. At that point, he was already committed, so. <laughs> <laughs> now that's true insane mode. I like yeah. that. I'm going to use that. I love that. I love that on the supports. Just, yeah. I'm going to go for the play. I'm going to force a reaction. We'll see what happens. Either way, it's space for Kotaro down bottom as he's continuing to get the levels now, especially with solo experience. Uh, three points in the Lunar Blessing, two in the Moonglaives. He's already ready to start farming some of camps in between the waves. So really efficient stuff from him already. Oh, they have Arena. Oh, oh. you got to run, Luna. Yeah, but it looks like she's going to be able to scout the rotation from mid coming her way. Again, great warding coverage right now. Tempest committing two wards right now across the river in the mid lane. So there was no way they were going to miss this uh, unless there was a smoke from Vici, which there was not. So yeah, yeah he's going to be able to get himself out of trouble. Uh, top. top. Yep, caught you. Dropping down the tombstone forces Erica to pounce away, and instead they might have to settle for Yang. No, just a little bit more damage. Bottom lane is being siege currently here by Vici Gaming, so they're likely to get a tower out from this as Kotaro's moved down into the jungle. But Tempest, bringing three heroes top lane or bringing two reinforcements top lane, are going to start sieging here. Yeah, I think Vici will defend this though. Oh, they're going to give it a go. Erica, still only level five though, and now here's a fourth hero for Tempest. That'll be Yang dead, because he's actually going to drop to the auto attacks of the familiars, and Erica's left all by himself. Okay, Mars tip it up. Sneaking in the bushes. Oh, yeah, there he is. Nice job cutting the tree. There's another TP coming. SF has a DD active for a couple more seconds, but it's not going to need it. Oh, the TP is canceled. I think that was an Ember. Oh. He didn't use Searing Chains. No, no, no. He has oh, realized he didn't have to come. Like, oh, uh, yeah. No, no, there was no, no need for it. There's no need. And uh, that's going to double as well to stop the siege. They, they were, of course, behind the tower, essentially cutting waves and doing chip damage to the tier one. Now they're going to have to reorganize for another push. I mean, I still have to point out though, it's they both they commit for the bottom rune at eight minutes, right? And he ends up getting a double damage, and that uh, that costs them so much. Like that bottom, okay, we'll fight the maybe. Yeah, they're 
really considering it. Instead, it's a kill onto the Luna. That's XM. Just sneaking around this bottom lane. Maybe caught a glimpse of the Luna on the ward and picks up the kill. It was just Shadow Races there. With Otto a bit lower on HP and three Shadow Races is all it'll take. No auto attacks necessary. Still have hope. Of course. Draken coming along fairly nicely as well here for his uh, Vlads. And at the very least, right, I mean, it, it is it always sucks to die in Dota 2. Uh, but on Visage, it sucks even more when your familiars die, because then you don't really do much. So he was still at least doing things with familiars, uh, and now has a second set to play with if he wants to go for a quadruple stun. He's going to scout this TP in from Frisk, and they're going to start the CC. No chance for the Echo. Could have maybe echoed, but didn't feel like it was going to be worth it. So Frisk is going to take the death. No threat of him TPing back into this fight. And that's going to send Vici Gaming scattering back now with a nice spear from BAB to disengage. Yeah. Really interesting item build by Slark. Hope of Corrosion. Don't see that too often. Are you more used to just seeing straight defusal? Yeah, straight anything. Or, like some people echo. go for that. Yeah, Echo or the, what is Falcon that? Falcon Blade, Echo or something like that. Yeah. Because it's, it's more expensive than you think. It's a thousand gold. It is. I mean, it's, up. It can't be that bad. A little bit of extra HP here, I suppose, right? Does at least nudge him over a thousand. Just a little but, bit. It's got it's got a fluffy hat in there. He's probably a little bit cold being a deep sea fish. Sure. <laughs> but you saw already just the Luna and the Visage teaming up there. Like, it's early, but the birds are still... They got plus 28 damage or whatever. Mm -hmm. And everything just uh, melts. Yeah, it's more than a DD run. And eventually with Vlad's, I think it gives you an 18% damage buff on hero type units, of which familiars are. Um, so it's even more, basically. Oh my goodness, goodbye familiars. Plus 200 gold for Erica. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> that hurts. Okay, but it's good. Draken had the cooldown, so he's at least back to farming. He's still playing Dota as Visage. Yep. Tombstone committed onto the high ground. Pat, you just. Wasting a bit of time here. Finds himself on the wrong side of the river, really. Now, Draken, maybe looking to fight a bit. He's got some support now, but Slavin's going to toss back a zombie. I didn't know you could toss those, actually. And he's going to get picked up there, swept up and killed by the Shadow Raises of XM. That's tower easily defended. And Tombstone is just going to safely be ignored by Vici. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. no. Familiar. Oh, that really hurts. Almost BKB could be on Shadow Field. Like, it's definitely doing what he's supposed to be doing. Good matchup into getting. Honestly, he's done everything this game. One mid, rotated bottom, got the tower, solo kills the enemy carry. Uh, so he's been de definitely putting in work. Ember, again, even with uh, as good as a start as he did, relatively speaking to what the performance was last game, considering the mid lane matchup this time, because he's going to scan and figure out there's an SF here. He doesn't know if there's reinforcements. Uh, actually, he, he does know because he does have a ward in the enemy jungle, so he knows this SF's alone, but he's not going to mess with him anyway, especially when BKB is now completed and delivered at 13 minutes in. Um, he's just been a, kind of relegated to split pushing waves with really only Orb of Corrosion against a Slark, against an, a Mars Arena into SF Requiem. Like, it, it's just playing too scary for him to try and get involved and be too aggressive here on the Ember. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, like, Vichy are... They, they should be feeling happy. Like, it, the game couldn't have gone much better than this. I don't think, like, Tempest could have been way crisper in their lanes, especially the side lanes. Uh, I think they should have done better in both. But they still have they still have their thing here. Like, when they get BKB on Luna, and they get their Wraith packed on Visage, like, it's really hard. Like, it's, I'm sorry, it's very easy to underestimate how strong they actually are. Even if you're up 4 or 5k gold. Okay, slot. And up back onto the Tiny he goes. Tiny with no points in grow, so at negative armor there with the over corrosion applied. There's uh, a mechanism up for Yang, uh, as well as there's Echo Saber delivered for Erica. A bit more strength now. Uh, but of course, having mech at the ready means he was never going to die there. So Tempest, don't overcommit. Oh, will Mars catch her? Oh, she's got Tyra knows. Yeah. Or does he know? Oh, he might go uphill. BAB oh, waiting there with a ward. But Kataro thinking again about it. Uh, again, this deep ward in the jungle of Vici Gaming right above their outpost, I think, is buying Tempest a lot of useful information, right? Uh, so, so that's really paid off here. I think Kotaro, by not seeing Mars in the jungle, you know, probably knows he's not in the triangle farming. He puts two and two together there. Radiant 
And instead, it's Tempest, who are going to be a bit more aggressive now. Seems like they want to try and aim for Yang. Uh, Kat Yu gets down to the Tombstone, a bit of a heal, as now they're not going to be able to touch Erica, covered by the Shadow Dance. Slavian is going to uh, die very easily there. Again, no levels in growth, zero armor, uh, and even just with the one point in Essence Shift, uh, it's three permanent edge already stolen for Erica. They're going to get a ward up on the high ground and try and get rid of the Tombstone. Erica is eventually going to get through it here, as from behind comes BAB. Spear is going to condemn Kyle. Oh, really There's a real as well down bottom where BK beat up is XM giving chase now to Kotaro, but there's no pounce. So unfortunately for Vichy Gaming, they're not going to be able to actually punish and get a plus one here onto Kotaro. Yeah. I thought he was going to bring the Mars, but... Me too. Okay, there's Rock in the top here. Yeah, that's a good fissure. And into the pounce this time. So it's oh, ready. they're getting Shadow Fian at the same they're time. Gonna get him. But they have turned onto the SF. Back down bottom, the root. He's got no BKB. Oh, no, he's, he's going to get up. Oh, but a nice dodge there by Sebas. He's going to be able to get right back in on top of him using one more remnant and gets the kill. That Ooh. was really well played, actually, because the IO, like, he, he was ready for... Yeah, if he, if he doesn't do that remnant play right there, he might be in time with IO with Mick. And then uh, <laughs> that's a GG move. Yeah. If the Shadow Fiend gets to turn and kill them there. So that was a really nice dodge by Amber Spear. There can be only so you've played a, a couple games of Wisp, haven't you, Pi? In these kinds of games, it, 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 when you go when you go relocating around the map like that, who? Oh, hold that thought. I'll ask you in a second, as they're gonna probably just collect a quick kill onto the Visage. That's a, a feels bad because they're easily gonna get the familiars, and yeah. now he doesn't even have TP. Yeah. But who usually makes that call? I, I, I imagine it's team to team. But how confident are you in a Wisp as a Wisp when you're really comfortable with your team to just be like, we're relocating here, get ready? Uh, I, it's mostly up to the the Wisp player. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, when you relocate. And like, okay. Sometimes you mess up, but... Uh, yeah. yeah. The carry should not be calling for you. He has to be thinking about where to farm. Like, where to be Right. That, that's the Wisp game, basically, right? He's, he's the one with the spell. He's got to know when to use it, essentially. Yeah. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Yang. Trying to put, put it together there. Punished slightly, but Vichy Gaming are relentless. They only lose the SF the once, and they're going to go right now back. Now this is really bad. Them. Like, this is... Tempest needed to either contest this or be getting this Roche. Uh, this is not looking good for him. Down it'll go. Uncontested. Little Fissure, not going to do much. Mid lane, BAB. Part in just clearing waves, as Sebes was at least pushing in, but... Not much to be done here. And check out these wards, by the way, by Vici Gaming. Specifically the one here right behind a tier one mid and where the tier one used to be top lane. Yep. Some pretty aggressive vision here. They're looking to set up fights, aren't they? And pickoffs. Oh, they see everything. Like they see wherever they're walking. Nice cat you. He avoids nice. the spear and he's gonna get off the tombstone then. Yang as well is isolated. He'll be killed off easily. BAB next to fall. Uh was not according to plan. They didn't see the other heroes hiding to the right. And a very quick D ward as well. Pretty immediate. Probably detecting now. It only makes that jump as their vision there and swiftly dealt with that. That was really well done there by Tempest. Not for sure. Would have been nice if Roche was up right now. Yeah, right. Unfortunately, that they just missed the bus there, haven't they? Uh. <laughs> and uh, with an Aegis here on SF, it'll keep him very safe until he gets his next item up, which is going to be Shadow Blade. Still has, of course, the BKB to rely on, even if he does get picked off the once. The only thing that's like been a little bit late, especially compared to last time for Tempest, uh, where we had a 13-minute Blink Dagger for a, a, ba a very bad lane for Shaker. This time around, it was also a bad lane for Shaker, to be sure, uh, but it's going to be an even later Blink Dagger. It's, it's still not up yet. Uh, instead, it's a reload play here onto Draken, an Arena of Blood as well over near the Roche, but it has calm. Two, Katyu dying to the right clicks of the SF as the toss avalanche is at least going to enable the Tiny to escape. But they take down Draken, and it's going to be two free kills here for not much committed. No BKB used there by XM. Yeah. Unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Both Ember and Luna are farming. Mm -hmm. And Ember nearly at his BKB here. How does that change the way you think he's going to be, you know, more willing to enter these engagements as careful here? Erica. Well, he's got a remnant, so. Oh, good, good effort there. Good effort. Oh, Kotaro. Oh, yeah, mid. Kotaro. Maybe Who's making the jump who? here. Remember, there's a second life. Your age is for XM. He's going to go ahead and maybe... Boy, it seems like he's very willing to let this first life go. He's got BKB for the second. He keeps all of his souls, but he's not going to be able to keep his shaker by the looks of things. 
Meanwhile, joining the fight from the side is Erica. Tombstone is going to be set up on the high ground as XM channeling up the Requiem. It's only going to catch on to two, but they've caught the Ember Spirit with it as well. He's feared and pounced. So double controls and a very easy kill that'll make there for Vici Gaming. A one for one trade. They lose Aegis, but they'll at least pick up the Ember. Oh, it's so unfortunate. Like, he has his BKB, but it's not delivered yet. Like, that could be a really good fight for him. He, like, he had it on him. Yeah. Unfortunate. That's going to be Erica's seventh permanent Agi stack there off the kill onto the Ember Spirits. You know, at, at least it's it's not like a completely bad trade for Tempest. They get rid of Aegis, they force another long duration BKB charge, and they get a kill onto Frisk, uh, who's been having a rather difficult game this time around on the Shaker, and he's not going to have it easy as well if he's hoping to sneak up on Draken, uh, as of course he's scouted there, picked up by the ward. So nice ward in here by Tempest, especially in the jungle on this dire side. But that's uh, not going to be good enough for Slavin. He still dies very quickly there to Erica. And in fact, they're going to smoke. They're going to look for more. Yeah. It Almost beats. BKB on Kotaro, let's see. He's Maybe got Blink Arena. Ah, oh, Draken, man. He has just been a magnet for these pounces all game. Fifth death now. Uh, ninth stack, if I'm not mistaken, there. Eighth pardon uh, for Erica Slark. Looking for another one with the uh, Acceptor up. Echo Saber, he gets to do a second one just as quick. There's nine. Yeah. Just a casual plus 78 agility right now. Yep. He's fine. He's, he's a good hero. Erica will be, uh, I, I mean, the change as well, right? A, re a big reason why we're seeing uh, this uh, Ag Scepter, which gives you the second charge of Pounce, being so popular and so good early is it does yeah, give bottom, you bottom, bottom. three essence. They jump onto they're the essence. Can they actually get a kill here? The reload's coming so. in, but the right clicks, they're just way too much. They brought in two heroes. Here's Erica. He still has a little bit of Agi to play with, up to 14 stacks, fighting through this one as well. As is Yang, it's going to be focused first by Sebas, who's a bit lower here on the mana, actually. The uh, mech's going to come out, and that's going to basically isolate Erica, who pounces up to the cliff. Tempest, they don't have vision up here. Oh, well, now they're going to see Erica flounder into the river. But a big pickup there for Tempest. Really big. Like, they're just hanging on in this game. Because I, I still really love their lineup. It's just, they can, can just get that one fight together. Because there's been a bit, bunch of pickups either way, right? Like, mm -hmm. this team kills three heroes, this team, whatever. Bitchy are still ahead in gold. So. No anyway. creeps there. A oh, spear. No. They don't have any backup. There's going to be the toss back. Is that good enough to save him? Unbelievable. Still alive is actually Sebas. He gets the remnants out as Tombstone is going to cover his retreat. Unfortunately, the supports of Tempest are going to have to die in his place. And it looks like it'll have to be supports plural as Ka you caught by the tail end of that fissure and pounced immediately. Uh, two more kills for Erica. <sighs> no, it's just, that, it's just so awkward. They, they really need to fight together. I don't know. Well, BKB is ready for them now for Tempest, you know, getting the kill onto the SF, breathing some, some wind back into their sails, but, you know, having to sacrifice both their supports just so Sebas can live there. I mean, it, it's, a, I think, a necessary trade, but, of course, it's never one that's going to feel good against these infinitely scaling cores. BAB in the meantime, he finds a spear onto Luna, who has BKB right. He's going to use it now okay. before the stun can actually catch him. BAB now dying very quickly. Echo Slam as well is going to nuke through no one. As Shaker instead is going to be the one to die. BKB still active for uh, BAB in these last waning seconds as XM under the cover of the Shadow Blade is going to get off the Requiem. That'll send three scattering, but most importantly, it isolates the SF. He's on the wrong side of the Requiem there. Down he will go. Slowly, in it. he's going to try and jump onto Erica, but he's covered now by the Shadow Dance. So that's an easy kill for him now beyond God like 11 0 and 6. Yeah. Oh no. No, Beachy it's gaming. just it's so frustrating to watch them play. Like they never get to just because he has to use his BKB really awkwardly so the Luna can't go in. Like they just need to be five together and take a fight. Like an honest fight. Instead it's it, it becomes these weird uh, like small skirmishes into them like getting wiped off. Like they just need yeah. to be together. And that kind of feels like you're, you're playing Slark's game right there, right? He, he feels like the kind of hero that's going to almost benefit the most in Dota from these kind of small skirmishes, scrappy fights. Yeah. No, they're, they're not playing their lineup. And now it's getting, now it's 10k gold lead. Mm. It's, just, it's, uh, it's, it's not getting easier. Let's just put it that it way. Isn't. It is, and I think Tempest are going to likely turn at least their attention towards the next objective, which for them is likely second Roche. That's still something, you know, they didn't couldn't contest the first one. They're going to be very keenly interested in contesting the second. They still have the strength, of course, of Tombstone, the, the Avatos, right, for some more burst damage and control. I think slaven has been playing a pretty fantastic series okay, okay. so far on his position fours, as they will go smoke on smoke in the river. Erica scouted. He's. I thought he was going to leap up. 
I thought he was going to leap up for a second. Instead, he's going to let BAB go in first. The Spear's going to whiff, and he only catches one inside the arena, but it's a tiny. That's a quick kill for the Slark. That is if he's not tossed back, but look at Sebas go. He's in on the three, but he's been broken there by the Silver Edge of the SF, so he's forced away. They have dropped as well. One familiar. Wraith Pact as well was committed. A couple BKBs around. They keep fighting. They're going to reset, but there's going to be the toss back. They need the Wisp here. Oh, Frisk. He doesn't have the Echo Sun for 14 seconds, but he's not going to need to save Erika because he's got Shadow Dance to save himself. Onto the cover of the Shadow Blade. Silver Edge make it is XM. They're going to at least find the Tiny as they focus now back on the BAB, who has no BKB. So he's as good as dead. They went for the reload save. Not sure where they reload him out, but there's going to be the Echo Slam now. Onto Kotaro, though, pounced and killed off. He's going to get perma -sunned. He had BKB, no chance to use it. Erika now, without Shadow Dance, jumping in quite confidently here. And even XM may look for more, as Katyu seems to be his next target. Silver Edge still providing him some invisibility. He's going to reveal it now. The Fissure Stun onto two. Careful here, though. XM doesn't have BKB. Requiem of Souls commit gets, uh, gets the kill, rather, onto Katyu. And again, it's these small, scrappy, skirmishy fights that have just always favored Fichi Gaming here so far. Yeah. Oh, that's a, he gets a little too cocky there with Luna, and it's really well played by Frisk to just commit, just go for it. And it's a fast Roche, I think. Yeah. I, I didn't quite see the timer on it. I only saw it when it was at five seconds, but it, Roche number two already up and ready to be taken. Fichi Gaming as well, I think, had a pretty big advantage here uh, in terms of their positioning, where they have wards down. But uh, Temp Tempest just need to, like, let's just go together now, and let's go to the Roche. There's no Echo up. Nope. They got BKBs. Let's hope they don't get caught out here before they all respawn. The ABs lurking around from behind as well, even though they did get a good, nice catch onto the SF, and now the back line's being broken by Erica. There's the call to one, and even the spear from behind. BAB connecting. He's going to give two kills here to Erica. Yeah, really well up played by Vichy. Up to 13-0 and 8 on Slark. It's, it's looking real hard now. Yeah. No, I mean, because they're also stressed, right? Because they don't see Vichy, so they think they're roaching. So like they're tr they're positioning a bit too aggressively. And then, oh, and they've yeah, here we go no again. No way. They, they've caught him last game here on the on the TA. Now into the trees they go underneath the tier two tower. Kotaro standing his ground with BKB, but BAB's got one as well. So Kotaro, all he can do is just TP away. I mean, in the Slark meantime, in Slark. I mean, it's oh, it's feeding frenzy here for him. There he goes. Oh, a little loosened beam. No, not good enough to save him. There's gonna be the Avatos. Depth Shroud doesn't actually cover the the Wisp here, so he might go down. But there's so much agi right now for Erica. Look at the rain. He consumes the Luna. Oh my goodness. Tiny barely on screen for a second there as well as he is skewered by the eggs shard of BAB four dead just like that Erica responsible for three of those what is this 147 agi plus 21 I, I don't know NA maths dude I can't do that but uh, that, that's way too much for Tempest right now oh bitchy they, they, they like they just won't let them breathe they won't let them get together and like uh, get a fight going yeah they, they've just continued to apply pressure and uh, unfortunately, it's it, it Tempest. They haven't really been able oh, to, to really resist. And there's another spear into the fissure. An easy kill. No buyback either for Sebas. And that just about likely seals things up here. As that'll be at least two lanes of, of creeps. Maybe the third. There's a buyback on Luna, but she's got no BKB until she respawns. Doesn't have Eclipse. And you're facing a 24k net worth lead and probably one less. Good toss back as Slavian's going to go ahead and sacrifice himself. Doesn't have buyback though, the Undying did, and that's now two more dead. Erica uh, up to even more agi. Oof. Another spear four, they got baited <laughs> by the illusion. Yeah. Kotaro yeah. is Just running for fun. his life. But yeah, I think uh, there's Megas easily. Vichy Gaming, unlikely to leave the base. They could back and even they could back and secure Roche and come back and, and really finish this one off if they wanted to be extra clinical. But as they see things, no need for that. Focus onto the tier fours. Luna trying to farm up a couple of tier three items like that'll make a difference. Unfortunately, not for the tier four towers and certainly not for the ancients. As under siege, it will go. Tempest. They're gonna give it one last fight for the boys as Kayu caught by the Arena of Blood, killed off by a single right click. He's got buyback. In comes Kotaro as well. He's holding onto the Ogre Seal Totem. Out comes the Eclipse. BK beat up. He is broken though. He's not bouncing these glaives. Gets off the Mantis style. Alive a bit longer here as they continue to stun up Erica here. He doesn't have Aegis, but has Depth Shroud still. Is no finishing way the game. to cover him, but it doesn't matter. The game's over. <laughs> <laughs> Aegis focused by Vici Gaming. An absolutely clinical game too here as they will run through Tempest and secure the 2-0 finish.
I, I like the way you phrased that, Pi. Just no breathing room, right? Vici Gaming kind of sensing the position that they were in, staying on the enemy side of the map, you know, always looking for these pickoffs, looking to set up a, a simple stun, uh, which then turned into Slark immediately pouncing on his targets and, and picking up kills. It was just like... It's it's rough when you see a game end and you watch the replay and you have Slark selected and you just always see he's never back to zero essence shifts. It felt like he always had essence at the end of that game for the last like ten minutes. Yeah, I mean you can he, he never died. Eighteen no. zero eleven, <laughs> like it's a pretty good yeah. performance. Uh, uh, yeah, no, it, for me it's just Tempest or a, they're a little sloppy. Like how they play, it's just everything is a little not good enough. Like the they're especially their laning, the off lane. Safe lane could also have been better. And then from that, they just never got to play their lineup, really. They had, like, mm -hmm. one move where they went together top, like, early on. But after that, like, they all have individual things they do really well. But at the end of the day, it's just not enough. Well, yeah, I mean, it's not going to be good enough to get through, you know, the, the medal of Vici Gaming here. We're, we're going to stay tuned, actually, and catch Tempest uh, for their next series where they take on Na'Vi. You know, you, you brought up already a couple of weak points there. But what are some of the strengths that you saw that they should, you know, maybe they could consider kind of playing towards those and maybe drafting around those strengths and looking to, to maybe approach this series versus Na'Vi a bit differently? What, what would you like to see them more focus on uh, as far as their strengths? Uh, I mean, their strengths... For me, it seems like uh, Kotaro always gets a game, uh, like, no matter what. So, like, uh, I mean, and I, I, around that, they play decently well. They just need to somehow figure out how to get their offlane working. Like, either they keep playing it like they are, but they just make Sladin rotate more. Like, go for two-minute rune, go for four-minute rune. Like, mm -hmm. whatever. Like, play like that. Or they, like, have a real discussion together there, and they figure out, yeah, how to play their offlane better. No, I get uh, you. M and, and other than that, just uh, talk about like yeah, you when your timings are. I don't feel like they're discussing it in the game, like okay. when they are supposed to get together. All right, yeah, we'll see here. That's uh, what what Pi is seeing here as well. And uh, I believe we can go to a break, uh, which means in about a little bit longer, maybe 10, 10 to fifteen minutes, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get to see Tempest uh, versus Navi and uh, what they're gonna be looking to draft around, what they're gonna be looking to change, and uh, perhaps maybe we'll get to see them take their first couple of victories as well. Tempest and Navi in about ten to fifteen minutes. We'll catch you then.